Good morning, dear friends. This is the first day, the weekday of a new week. And it is so good that in the beginning of this week and uh, the, before we start the activities of this new day, to spend a few minutes in the presence of the God or at the feet of Jesus, listening to him and learning what he wants to teach us. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will enlighten us and expand our mind in order to understand and grasp the truth. Today's meditation is titled, Three Foundational Principles of Life, based on Luke, Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 8, verses 16 to 18. And there are three things, three principles I want to mention first. Number one, a lamp of or life is for the purpose of giving light. And number two, secrecy is impossible. Verse 17, all things will be found out. And number three, truth is very narrow. Verse 18, and in this meditation, I shall consider only the first of these three principles and lead you to five simple facts about light which is the purpose of lamp. So let us consider this. The lamp is a given lamp. It is not purchased. It is not earned. God gives the lamp to every man. It is a gift from God. So you know, life is the most wonderful, precious gift from God. How true it is, your life, how did you get your life? Did you buy it or did you earn it? No. Where were you before you were born? Consider that. The truth is, you existed in the heart of God before your mother conceived you in her womb. Your life is given to you as a gift by a loving Father, our Father in heaven. It is given to you when your mother conceived you in her womb. Your life is therefore very, very precious. And when you are born into this world, where were you? Were you here? Were you aware of uh, your pre-existence life? No. And your life therefore is the most precious gift and the best gift you have ever received. Therefore, you have no right to treat your life as if life is created or earned by you. By creation, your life belongs to God. And by redemption, you belong to God. In any way you look at it, your life is not your own. It belongs to God. And before God created you in your mother's womb, He knew you existed in His heart. And according to His plan, He designed you and sent into this world. And it is for this reason, you cannot say, it's my life. And I will do what I want. I will live in my way. No, my friends. If you are an intelligent person, you will realize how important, therefore, it is for you to treat your life with respect and with grateful heart and live it for the glory and honor of God. And the second truth about life is 
the lamp which is your life is to be lit and without litting the lamp it just exists if it is not lit the lamp is not fulfilling its primary function and what is the primary function of the lamp to give light it may be used for other things as well for example a lamp can be used for decoration to to, to beautify your house or your room or focusing attention on some other objects etc so lamps can be used for these various purposes other than giving light but the primary purpose for which the lamp is created was to be lit and it has to be lit before it can fulfill its primary function and which is give light to its surrounding how do we lit our lamp or how do we uh, lit our life so that your life will become a light around your world by coming to christ the light of the world jesus christ said i am the light of the world and he is the real light he is the light which lightens and enlightens every man and therefore man has to come to christ and put the lamp of his life up to the light of christ in order to be lit and ignited and quickened and my friends that is exactly what jesus want you to understand <clears throat> jesus said i am the light of the world and then later on to his disciples he said you are the light of the world now how we become the light of the world and the example is taken from the function of the sun and the moon the moon does not have a life of a light of its own what the moon does is it receives the light from the sun and then the moon reflects the sun uh, the sun's light and send it back to the earth what a wonderful example is that and in the same way if you really want to shine as a light of the world around you this is what you need to do you have to come to jesus christ and receive the light from him which is his life and when you are enlightened by his light then you are lit you are ignited and you are quickened and you become the light of the world on behalf of jesus christ and that is the principle and now there are few scripture verses that you can refer to i will mention and please read it after this meditation or sometimes today ephesians chapter 5 verse 8 and then the gospel according to st john chapter 1 verse 9 and then chapter 8 verse to verse 12 and then chapter 11 verses 9 and 10 read these references one from ephesians and the other three are from the gospel according to st john and the third thing i want to say about lamp is the lamp not to be hid once the lamp is lit no no man covers it 
or puts it under the bed or under some uh, other object. In which case, the lamp and the light are useless. So the lamp is not to be hid. It has to be set on a lampstand and put it on a higher place so that the entire room could be lighted and lit. And anyone who comes in will have no difficulty or problem in finding the room and where to sit and where to go. And if it is hid, the lamp and the light are useless. So a lamp is never to be hid. The Christian life we possess was not given to us to be admired, talked of, and professed, but to be practiced. But what we have today, we have more profession than practice. And that will not help us for us to be the light of the world. Mere profession is hypocrisy. And if we are to be the light of the world and in the world, our lives have to be set on a lampstand. And we stand on Jesus and on that solid rock where the whole world can see us shining like the light. It was not meant to remain in our intellect, in our bedroom. Christianity is a talent committed to our, our, our charge to be given out for others' sake. As you know, the light, the lamp does not shine for itself. Yes, it will use up all the oil that is there, but that low oil also comes from outside and poured into the lamp and the light begins to shine. But why all this? It is the light that must shine forth. And my friends, you also as a life, as the light, have oil. And what is the oil? It is the Holy Spirit. And that's why Jesus Christ has given us the Holy Spirit and His presence in us. And the Bible says in the words of the Apostle Paul, our bodies are the temples in which the Holy Spirit lives. And as long as the Holy Spirit lives within you, there is no need to worry about, uh, the, about uh, uh, the light shining through you. And that's why Apostle Paul again urged believers to be filled with the Holy Spirit in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8, 18. And that is a, this is a daily exercise to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So the first thing that must happen as you begin this day to be filled with the Holy Spirit by the grace of God. Pray to God so that your, your life will begin to shine. A spirit-filled life will shine for the glory and honor of God. You will shed light all around you. There are people groping in darkness, seeing your life, hearing your testimony, and seeing your happy face. The people wonder how everybody is worried about how you can just smile and sing songs of praises. And when you give your testimony, what the Lord has done for you, they will see the light and they will be attracted to Jesus Christ. Let your light shine that others may see the good works and glorify our Father in heaven. So you as the light must shine before the world. And fourthly, the light of the lamp is to be seen by all who enter. 
A room can be dark even during their time. Because all the windows are closed and uh, no sunshine coming in. And you coming from outside, you enter into that room, you won't be able to see everything clearly. And so the light of the lamp is to be seen by all who enter the room. This is the purpose for which the lamp is lit up. And so, here is your opportunity to be a light in this world. You are the light. The, and, the, and finally, the lamp is to be conspicuous. And that means it must be seen and it must be very, very uh, obvious the light is there. The believer burns and shows the light. Your life has to be a burning light. And that burning light is given by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And let that light burn and shows the light to the outside world. The only question is, how brightly does your life shine? Or how brightly your light that is within you shines? Is it bright or dim? Is it strong or weak? Is it flickering or flaming? Is it blinking or flooding? Is it smoking or is it clear? These are the questions that is to be answered about your life. How is your life? And I pray that you will be answered all these questions in a very positive and happy manner. It is not dim, it is bright. That is what God the Father expects. It is not weak, but it is strong. And it is not just, uh, uh, just, just uh, uh, flickering, but it is flaming. It is flooding. The light is flooding the entire space, not just blinking. And it is very, very clear and not smoke that covers the light. How is your light? How is it shining? Will you be able to answer these questions positively? And I pray by the grace of God, you trust the grace of God and trust the Holy Spirit to keep you shining with the brightness that God expects you to have. And as long as the Holy Spirit is within you, your light will be brighter. And this is God's will for you, my friends. That's why Jesus said, you are the light of the world. He expects you to shine on his behalf. God bless you as you receive the Holy Spirit and be filled with the Holy Spirit and live and let your light be seen. God bless you. Father in heaven, thank you for this wonderful privilege we have to be the light of this world. Because you are the sun and we receive the light from you and then reflect that light to the world around us. So may we always abide in you and be connected with the source of this light and be connected with the Holy Spirit who is the oil in the Lamb. Thank you for helping us today. In Jesus' name, Amen. This is a great day. Enjoy this day and have a good day.